What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com back with another SketchUp extension tutorial for you. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about how to combine a couple different extensions to create a window that moves along a curved face inside of SketchUp. Um, if you're looking for more great SketchUp extensions, make sure to check out my SketchUp extensions guide at the SketchUpEssentials.com slash extensions. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so this tutorial came from seeing a building that had kind of a curved face, but with some kind of segmented windows that went along that. And then uh, the frame around the outside was kind of extruded outwards. And so I was kind of looking at it and trying to figure out how to model that in SketchUp. And so what I wanted to do is I'm going to start off and we're just going to create this shape. So to create our shape, we're going to use the circle tool to create a circle. And then we're going to use the scale tool to kind of scale this out a little bit. So you can see how this has been scaled outward, so it's more of an oval shape. And I guess I'll start off by saying that the extensions you're going to need, and I will link to all of these in notes down below, are Tools on Surface from Fredo 6, Joint Push Pull from Fredo 6, and you're also going to want to have Lattice Maker from TIG. And I will link to all of those in the notes down below. But in this video, what I wanted to do is I wanted to take this shape and we're just going to kind of extrude this up here a little bit. And you can assume it's a little bit taller, more of like a skyscraper shape or something like that. I'm going to turn off my hidden geometry for a second and probably erase out my default model. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to split this up into different floors. So what I'm going to do in order to divide this into floors is I'm just going to click on this edge right here. And we're just going to use the move tool to make a copy or a couple different copies along this face. So I'm just going to select this whole thing and then I'm going to use the move tool and make sure when you use the move tool to tap the control key to enter copy mode. And so what that's doing is that's creating a copy of this edge and then I'm going to type in the divided by sign and then we'll say something like five. So I just typed in divided by five and I hit the enter key. And you could make this whatever you want. You could do this by 10 or whatever. I'm gonna go ahead and leave it at five for right now. And uh, just know this is more of like a demonstration than an actual skyscraper. Um, but what we're gonna do is what we've done is we've basically moved this line down and we've split this up into a few different faces. And so now we can use the hidden geometry of these faces inside of our model in order to create our window. So to do that, we're just gonna go up to view hidden geometry. And if you remember, um, the hidden geometry are the faces that make up um, or the hidden faces and hidden edges that make up all of these different faces inside of SketchUp. So when you have a curved face like this, it's actually just a number of flat faces making up that edge. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to use that in order to create our windows. So to start off, let's assume that we're going to have a window that runs along these three faces right here. So in real life, probably what you would do is you would build this with segmented glass in here. So we're going to do two different things. We're going to create an outward. We're going to offset this outward using an extension and then use joint push pull in order to create our frame. And then we're also going to use lattice maker in order to create our window. So we're going to start by creating our frame. So to do that, I'm just going to hold the shift key and I'm going to click on these three faces that you can find by turning your hidden geometry on. And then inside of the extension tools on surface, there's this really cool tool called offset on surface. And if you remember the normal offset tool would offset the edges of a single face, but that's not really what we want here because this is a curved face and this doesn't do the geometry right or anything like that. So that won't really work with just the native tools. That's why we have to use an extension. Well, with this extension, you can select these three faces and then use the offset tool in order to offset this out. And in this case, we'll go ahead and we'll assume we're going to offset this out, maybe like an inch or something like that. And so when we offset this out, what we can do, we can go in and we can hold the shift key and we can select all of these different faces. So you can see how I'm selecting this face here. And I'm just doing a shift click in order to select all of those different faces. The reason we're selecting those faces that we created is we're going to use the extension joint push pull to push this outward. And if you remember, the extension joint push pull allows you to push pull multiple different faces at once, and then it'll kind of smooth the difference between them. So with all of these selected, you're just going to go into joint push pull and you're going to select the option for joint push pull. And we're just going to single click once. 
and then we're gonna move our mouse outward and we're gonna move this out however far we want this to go. So in this case, I think six inches is probably about right. So I'm just gonna type in six inches and hit the enter key. And what that does when this creates this is that push pulls this whole thing outward um, so that we've got our window frame in here. And one thing you might wanna think about doing when you do this, and so I'm just gonna go back in and reselect these real quick. And we're just gonna do this again, but this time we're gonna use a setting inside of joint push pull that will create this new geometry as a group. And so what that'll do is that'll make that a lot easier for us to apply a material to this later. So we're just gonna go in here and we're just gonna activate joint push pull again, but this time we're gonna to wanna to find the option for generate as a group. So now when I push pull this out, I type in six inches and I hit the enter key, this gets created as a group, which means now if I was to come in here and apply a material to this, um, I wouldn't have to apply that to all the individual faces, I could just apply that to the group itself. But now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create our glass. And so when you look at glass on a building like this, um, you could just apply a glass color if you wanted to. That would definitely work. So if you wanted to select all of these and just apply like a blue material to it, that would definitely give you a fine window in here if that's what you wanted. We're gonna add a little bit of realism by selecting these three faces. And we're gonna use the extension Lattice Maker in order to kind of extrude these in just a bit, not very much. So probably we're gonna use this set a width of maybe like, we'll say like a quarter inch or something like that, so 0.25. Um, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna set our depth at 0.25. I'm not gonna worry too much about my pane inset. We'll see what this comes up with. And then our pane material, we're gonna set to glass. And so what that's gonna do is that's gonna basically take this shape, it's gonna offset it a little bit, and then it's gonna push pull it backwards. So now what you have is you have glass in this model but it looks like you've got the little pieces in here that retain the glass that are actually created inside of a real glass construction. So it's just a more realistic window. So if I was to do this full speed, um, just to give you an idea, I would just come in here and I would go ahead and I would extrude this outward. I would select these edges, push pull them out six inches. I would select these three and I would use Lattice Maker and I would just do 0 0.25, 0 0.25, 0 0.25, paint material glass, and there we go. And I could come in here and I could select this material and apply this, but you can see how this, this can be a really fast way to create a window on a curved surface using these extensions. And if I turn the hidden geometry off here, the other thing you could do is you could use the eraser tool to hide these edges. So I would just hold the shift key and click and drag across these with the eraser active and you can see how that softens those edges so that we can't see them inside of our model anymore. This is a quick, easy way to create windows on curved or segmented surfaces. So leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought about the workflow, if there's any tips you have for stuff like this. I just love having that sketch up conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new sketch up content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. So make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.